What happens to variables in YAL? Can we get a quick overview? Well, there is no graphical notation for variables, but there is a matrix. Hi, my name is Andreas Hense and I make videos on business process automation. This video is part of a series of YAL tutorials. Today I'll show you the new I.O. matrix in YAL. With the new version 4.5, YAL can display a matrix showing which variables are used in which tasks. It is called the Task Variable I.O. matrix. It is in fact similar to a CRUD matrix without the C and the D. Let's find out. So here we have the YAL editor open with the add terminal example. This is one of the standard examples of YAL and I put a link in the description below. So here we have already the resource coloring activated and what we are going to do now is we go to this table symbol here and get the task variable IO matrix. And in the task variable IO matrix, the column headers are the task names. So it starts with receive request and then goes on with check form. And the order is such that it tries to make it as much as possible with the right order. But of course, this cannot be perfect because we have loops and things like that. It also goes down to sub workflow. So also um, the sub workflow configure info, these two tasks are part of it. And then we can see the row descriptions are the variable names, the net variables. And what we can see here now is a matrix showing us at which position we have a write W or we have a read R or we have read write R W. And what should happen if the order is correct here is that there is always first a write and then a read. If we have a read at first, for example, down here, then we should check if the variable is initialized properly because otherwise that might lead to an error. And we get a nice overview how variables are used and where. Let me know in the comments if you find this useful. See you next time.